This is the Right Now Podcast with Sarah Warner. Episode 72, Finishing What You Start. Welcome to Right Now, the podcast that helps aspiring writers and all writers to find the time, energy, and courage you need to pursue your passion and write every day. I'm your host, Sarah Warner. And I got to tell you, I am terrified. I should clarify there's no kaiju arising from the sea and stomping toward me. There's nobody holding my family and friends hostage. I am not being forced to walk a tightrope a thousand feet up in the air. I am simply faced with a new challenge. And I think in its own way, it is an ancient challenge of finishing what you start. It may seem unreasonable when I tell you that I am terrified of finishing up a project. But there's a lot going on here. Let me back up a little bit. If you've been listening to this show for any duration of time, you might know that I am working on a creative writing project that I have turned into an audio drama podcast, so a fictional podcast. And this podcast is called Girl in Space, and it's launched. And if you want to listen to it, you can. I've been working on it since September 2017. Actually, that's not true. I've been working on it since earlier in 2017, and it launched in September 2017. So I've been working on this project for, yeah, two years. I am in year number two of the same project. So there's a lot bundled up in what it means for me to bring season one of this show to a close. Originally, episode 12 was going to be the finale. I wrote episode 12, and it was okay, and I released it on, I want to say, the day after Christmas in 2018. So December 2018 was when this episode came out. And... I have to admit, when I was writing episode 12, I wasn't writing it as the finale because I wasn't ready to write a finale yet. And we're going to dig into why and what all these fears are and what they all mean. But suffice to say that I essentially put off finalizing my story in episode 12. And so then I was like, okay, I actually do want a good season finale. I want to write a finale. Okay, so there's going to be 13 episodes, not 12 episodes in season one of Girl in Space. And so I started looking at what it meant to write a finale. Because confession time, in a way, I have never finished a project before in my entire life. Now... Tim, my husband, told me, Sarah, that is not true. (laughs) Every time you publish an episode of the Right Now podcast, you finish an episode that's a small project, you finish it, you've finished tons of websites, you've finished reading tons of books. And I'm like, yeah, but I've never finished them to my satisfaction. And honestly, I don't know if that's possible. And so I don't want to set that up as some kind of goal because I don't know if any of us will ever attain it. Those of you who have listened to the show for a while have heard me say, done is better than perfect. But really, I think sometimes in my mind, I equate done with perfect. And in that sense, I I don't know. I don't know if I've ever been 100% satisfied with anything that I've ever created. So what does it mean to finish something? What does it mean to be done with a project? Is it publishing it? Is it being satisfied with that project in your mind and knowing that there's nothing you could do to make it any better? I've talked before on this show, too, about creative works being very organic, so having a life of their own and constantly changing and shifting. 
I know this isn't a fantastic example, but sometimes I feel a little bit like George Lucas, who went back and toyed and edited with the original Star Wars trilogy from the 70s and 80s and added in some CG stuff and just kept fiddling with it in a way that distanced his final product, the way that he re-released the movies, from the way that I had seen them as a finished product, as a viewer. And this is an interesting, interesting concept to me, how something could exist and be done and finalized in my mind as a Star Wars fan, and how it could be so incomplete and imperfect in the mind of its creator. But I think that says a lot. In my mind, all of these Right Now podcast episodes... I've done over a hundred of them if you count the coffee breaks, and there hasn't been one yet that is perfect, but I think they're all done because I don't have the time or the energy to go back in George Lucas style and retouch them. I'm done with them in the sense that I'm ready to move on and continue creating. They convey the message that I needed them to convey at the time in which I created them, and I can move on from them to the next episode. So how do I translate that over to Girl in Space? It has taken me since December 2018, and I'm not even done with it yet, but I'm going to say to complete this episode, to finish season one of this show. I plan, you know, crossing my fingers because I'm going to go back to sound designing after I finish recording this episode of right now, but... I plan on finishing this episode, sound design, all of the steps, marketing it, posting it, you know, all of that good stuff by the end of July 2019. That's more than seven months for what's going to end up being an hour long episode. How on earth could an hour of content take seven months to create? Well, I mean, you know, very easily since I've done it. <laughs> very, very easily. And there's been other things going on as well. I launched a course, Podcast Now. Uh, if you're interested in starting your own podcast, you can check it out. It's at sarahwerner.com slash podcast hyphen now. So I, I launched a course in February, and I've been working on some other things with my intellectual property and getting that in front of more people in different ways, which you'll hear more about as things continue to progress. And so I've, I, I've had a lot going on. It's not like I've been like laying in bed, staring at the ceiling for seven months. And creating a 60-minute audio drama podcast actually takes a lot longer than most people think. I recently released a infographic that my husband, Tim, designed for me. So thank you, Tim. And it charts the progress of Girl in Space episode 13 because I've been getting so many emails and one-star reviews like, where is this podcast? Where's the finale? Come on, Sarah. And it takes hundreds of hours. I think I've talked about this on the show before, but it took me nine full drafts. So hundreds of hours of writing. And the final draft is 74 pages long, so it's super long. Normally, episodes of Girl in Space are between 20 and 30 pages long, so this is a whopper. So it took me a long time to write. It took a long time for me to get in touch with my actors, most of whom are family and friends, and to finagle them into doing one more episode. Ah, <sighs> that was fun. I love you guys. So I have all the recordings back, and then I had to do dialogue editing, which meant going through and selecting the best take of each line. And now I'm doing sound design, and each of these steps takes over 100 hours. And so it's been a journey, but hopefully I'm finishing it up this month. So I haven't been just laying idly by. But, here's the big but. I probably could have finished it much sooner than July 2019. So let's go back to me being terrified, because I think this is something really important that I haven't seen a whole lot of writers talk about. There's a lot of talk out there about starting a new project, 
Uh, and there's different flavors of it from how do I know which project to start to how do I start a project? How do I face down a blank page? But what do you do if you have a giant, messy, tangled project that is going in 9,000 different directions, like some sort of tentacled creature, and you need to wrangle it to fit safely in a little paper bag? It's a daunting task. And it is even, dare I say, a scary one. And it's not even just scary because all of the work that's involved. I can do hundreds and hundreds of hours of work and be happy. Like, if it's work that I enjoy, that's awesome. I will focus. I will dive into it. It will bring me joy and satisfaction as I'm doing the work. That's not necessarily where the resistance and the fear come in. I'll do the work. And maybe that's true for you, too. You can do the work. But the fears that have come in for me, and that I've recognized after some pretty serious reflection, and whining to my friends, you know who you are, is, what happens when I finish this? What will my life become when I'm no longer working on this season of Girl in Space? What will I have to work toward and on when I finish this project? How am I going to tie up all of these loose ends? What happens if I spend seven months working on this episode and it does not live up to my fans' expectations? And they say something like, seven months for this? Can I create something that's seven months good? What happens if I let down my audience? Their expectations at this point are miles high. Judging by the feedback that I get on Twitter and Discord and Facebook, the hype is real. And I don't think I can live up to it. There's a lot going on here. There's a lot of expectation, both perceived and real. There's a lot of pressure, both perceived and real. And there's a lot of hard work that needs to get done. And if I'm being honest, my urge... My compulsion, my creative energy has been dragging me like I'm walking Clifford the Big Red Dog. Like it's just been dragging me toward the lure of starting a new project. Because for me, like I said, starting is easy. Oh man, why wrap this up when I can start something new and exciting and feel the thrill of creation? Possibility. Why would I want to slog through wrapping up this thing? Why would I want to stuff this giant tentacled squid into a little paper bag when I can very easily hatch some new little squids? They're so cute. They're so small. Also, yes, this podcast is establishing that new book ideas, new project ideas are little tiny squids. So love and hug. There's fear and there's resistance. So what do we do about this? Usually, if I don't know what to do, I I do a couple things. Number one, I talk to my friends. Most of my friends are other writers and creators because that's just how my life has gone. That's who I've connected with. That's who I've made lasting friendships with. And so I tell them I'm terrified of finishing my project. And they're all very encouraging and very kind. But other people can't take away your fears. They can help you identify them. And they can help you come up with strategies to cope with them. But only you can take action. Only you can handle and deal with and put down your fears. So the other thing I do, in addition to talking with my friends and philosophizing about the nature of finished, which is what a lot of the conversations devolved into or evolved into, depending on your take, I purchase books. And I read books. I love books. You probably also have a penchant for books. If you're a writer, you are probably also a reader. And if you're not, then you need to read more. But that's a whole nother episode in and of itself. In fact, I think it's, oh boy, it's one of the really early ones. It's why writers need to read. I'll link to it in the show notes for this episode. But the book that I picked up on this particular occasion is called Finish by John Acuff. 
I've read some of John's other books before, and I follow him on Twitter, and I was like, you know what? If I'm going to learn how to finish a project, I might as well learn it from somebody I like, somebody I'm already inclined to follow and respond to, and so I dug into the book. The book called me out right away, (laughs) as good and useful books often do. The premise of the entire book is that the biggest obstacle to finishing isn't laziness. It's perfectionism. And boom, that hit me hard. Because I want to perfectly set and manage expectations. Because I want the perfect ending to the story I've worked so hard on. Because I want people to have a perfect reaction to it and say, oh, Sarah, you've created this new literary light. Oh, you will guide our ways with your futuristic thinking and your insight. I mean, that's what we want, right? Praise and adoration and knowing that what we have created makes a real difference in the world, that we're changing the world for the better. Or maybe that's just me because that's part of my personal mission statement. In his book, Finish, John Acuff talks about what happens when our actions underperform our expectations. That also hit me really hard. This leads to a lot of frustration in creatives like you and me, and it also leads to a lot of projects never being finished or even started. You know the feeling when you open up a blank page and you start writing and boy, what you're writing just does not match the image that you had in your head. You can't get the two to align. You have this really cool story, but your words don't feel like enough. They don't feel right. They don't fit. You're not conveying that same magical, amazing tone that you had in your head or that you felt in your heart. It's frustrating. And it's the reason that a lot of us stop right in our tracks and close our laptops or put down our pen and paper. Because as John says in his book, Perfectionism tells us lies. One of those lies is, you should quit if what you're creating isn't perfect. It's easier to quit than it is to wrangle this imperfect, messy, jumbled, creative mess in our minds. It's easier, but it's not worth it. It's not fulfilling, and it's not satisfying. He talks about cutting your goal in half and then cutting those goals in half until you have manageable steps that you can take to finish a large project. It reminds me of something I picked up in the content strategy world when I was working at ClickRain, and that is, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Cut your goal up into bite-sized chunks. He also suggests that you make it fun. He talks about us having this false belief that work needs to be miserable, and that success needs to come from misery. And it doesn't. This is a topic that I love, and I'm actually planning a Right Now episode about the misery that we tie in with hard work, and I'm really excited to explore that with you. So that's a big one for me. He also talks about a not-to-do list. So choose what you're going to fail at because there are so many things that we feel like we need to do, especially if you look back at my last episode about should and supposed to for writers. You can let some of that stuff go. You don't have to do everything, especially the things that you feel like you should do or are supposed to do. Last year, while I was working on Girl in Space and some other projects, My not-to-do list included taking care of the flowers outside of my house. I let all of my flowers die because it was just one more thing that I could not do if I was going to focus my energy on creating something good. So I let it go. This year, I'm taking care of my flowers, and they look fantastic, and I'm really proud of them. So creating a not-to-do list in saying no to the shame that comes along with getting rid of things that we feel like we should do. Again, go back and listen to episode 71 of the Right Now podcast, Supposed to for Writers, if this is something that you get hung up on. 
John talks about a couple more practical things, including ditching the quote-unquote noble obstacles where you hide. I feel like this goes hand in hand with creating a not-to-do list. We feel very noble when we say, I can't write right now because I need to do the dishes. Or, I can't write today because I'm prioritizing my children. Like, yeah, those are, those are very legit things. Like, nobody would argue against any of those. You know, you need to take care of your children. You need to have clean dishes in your house. But do you need to prioritize things over your writing? This is where it gets really, really, really difficult. We hide from our own creativity and being busy. And I am guilty of this, just like you are. There are so many times when I could have been progressing Girl in Space episode 13, and instead I was working on my website, or I was writing an email, or I was doing all of these things that seemed productive, but were actually sabotaging me from completing the work that was actually prioritized and meaningful. I tell myself, I'm being productive, ergo... This is good. But what are you being productive on? Is it your priority project? Is it the thing that's going to change the world? Is it the most important thing? Maybe it's okay to have a sink full of dirty dishes. Maybe it's okay if your children entertain themselves for a while. Or maybe it's not. The point is, that's your call to make. The final thing that just really kicked me in the pants in John's book was his question. What are you getting out of not finishing? And that really blew me away because it took me back to my fears. I could coddle my fears. By not finishing, I could stay where I was. I could stay in a known place, a safe place. By not finishing, I couldn't disappoint anyone. Well, okay, I I was disappointing people by not providing them with episode 13, but that was a known and existing disappointment. Like, oh, okay, I can deal with this. They're disappointed because it's not out yet. That's fine. But what happens if they hate it? That's scary. That's a risk. It's safer to not create episode 13 and face the criticism and face the potential that people will be like, meh, that's a C-plus episode. It's not seven months good. By not finishing, I wouldn't have to expose myself as a fraud, which I feel like all of the time because of something called imposter syndrome. By not finishing, I wouldn't fail to live up to the hype. So wow, there's, there's a lot of safety and comfort in not finishing this episode. Why on earth? Would I want to finish it? So in my mind, I need to ask, what is the value of not finishing? And what is the value of finishing? And which of those values is greater? What is the value of done? Well, I would get to move on to a new project, which is exciting, but I could move on to a new project right now without finishing episode 13. Well, let's see. I would get a sense of satisfaction and completion from finishing episode 13. I just looked up and there is a giant spider on my wall. Hello, giant spider. I bet that spider doesn't think about finishing what she starts. She just makes her web. And when she's finished, she gets to eat insects. I think it comes down to going back to why you started in the first place. Yes, I started to chase an exciting new idea and explore the road down which it led. Yes, I started a new episode because I didn't feel satisfied with the current story. Yes, I started a new episode because I had more to say that I hadn't said in previous episodes. And if I want to get all of that out there, if I want to have it matter... I have to finish it. I have to publish it. I have to make it worth it. I have to acknowledge my fears. Fears of being inadequate. Fears of the episode not being good or good enough. Fears that it won't live up to the hype. 
fears that I'm not ready to be done with this project because maybe deep down inside I'm scared of starting a whole nother project that might not be as successful. Fear that I will miss an important point that fans have been waiting for me to wrap up. I need to acknowledge those fears. Yes, those are fears that I have. And I need to put them next to me in the passenger seat. Because if I'm being honest, I've been letting them drive the bus. Which is why it has taken me seven months to create this episode. I need to acknowledge that fear and say, you know what, you're here, that's fine. Fear is normal. It's a survival tactic. Yes, it's healthy to have but it's not driving this bus. I'm driving this bus. I'm going to acknowledge all of the hard work that I've put in so far, and it has been a lot. (laughs) I wrote nine full drafts of this thing, and they were all different. And maybe there's something I can get excited about in writing the ending and in finishing. A good ending is unexpected but satisfying. So no deus ex machina. It means God is in the machine, and it means that a solution to the hero's problem kind of comes out of nowhere, unearned and unasked for. The ending has to be earned, it has to be unexpected, and it has to be satisfying. I also think that a good and satisfying ending is a little bit like a bicycle wheel. So it comes full circle, and all of the problems, maybe not all of the problems, most of the major problems are resolved. So it comes full circle right back to where it started, but the wheel has progressed one wheel's length. So it's moved forward. It's made, if you will, one revolution. I can get excited about this. I can get excited about finishing this project. I can acknowledge my fears and say, yeah, these exist and they're normal, but they're not going to stop me. Because the success or failure or perceived success or failure of this episode does not define me as a person. This is not the be-all, end-all of everything ever. Because after this, I'm going to move on and create something new. And then after that, I'm going to create something else that's new. And with everything we publish and create, we get our chance to change the world that much more. So I'm curious, do you ever have trouble finishing what you start? I really hesitate to be one of those people who says there's two types of people in the world, so I'm not going to say that. But I do know that there are people who are more inclined to start projects like myself, but there are also people who really love executing and finishing projects. And I salute those people. Because that is not my strong suit, and I acknowledge that. I would love to hear how you finish projects. I would love to hear your mindset that goes into finishing a project. I would love to know the roadblocks that you come up against when you need to finish something. Or if you have solutions to all of these fears, if you have uh, solutions to these problems that some of us have with finishing, let us know what to do. I would love to hear your input. If you'd like to leave me some of that input, you can just go out to sarahwerner.com. That's S-A-R-A-H-W-E-R-N-E-R.com. Navigate to the show notes for today's episode, episode number 72, Finishing What You Start, and leave me a comment. I read and respond to every single comment that I get, so let's have a conversation there. I would really like that. I would love to hear from you. I am not alone in creating the Right Now podcast. Okay, technically, I am alone right now speaking into a microphone and into your ears, but I don't create this podcast alone. There are many, many people who help me with encouragement and financial support, and I want to acknowledge you here. I would first love to acknowledge my Patreon patrons. Patreon is a secure third-party donation platform that lets you throw money at me. If it's a dollar an episode, two dollars an episode, uh, there's a bunch of different tiers out there to choose from, as well as thank you gifts for your generosity. I would especially like to thank patrons Elise Jane Tabor, Julian Vincent Thornburg, Michael Beckwith, Leslie Duncan, and Gary Medina. Thank you all so, so much 
for supporting the work that I do here at the Right Now podcast. If you're interested in supporting the show, I am out on Patreon. That's P A T R E O N dot com. Just search for Sarah Ray Werner. So that's patreon.com slash S A R A H R H E A W E R N E R. And you can make a pledge to support the work I'm doing here. The financial stuff really, really is important. It helps me take the time away from my other projects. It helps cover hosting costs. It helps do all of that good stuff. So I really do appreciate it. It's also just, it's a good way to say thank you. If you feel like this show has helped you out at all in your writing journey, I appreciate it. I would also like to thank John Acuff for writing the book Finish, which inspired me to work toward finishing Girl in Space. It's everywhere. I just went to Barnes & Noble and picked it up. So you shouldn't have any trouble finding it if it sounds like the right fit for you. I would also like to thank my friends who have been cheering me on this whole time, notably Tim Krause, my husband, my good friend Jordan Cobb, my siblings Harrison, Rachel, and Rebecca, my podcast group of friends, including Sean Howard, Eric Saris, Kat Blackard, Caitlin Vengroff, Caitlin Stats, and so many more. You guys are all amazing, and I appreciate every single one of you. Thank you for your encouragement. <sighs> and with that, this has been episode 72 of the Right Now podcast, the podcast that helps aspiring writers and all writers to find the time, energy, and courage you need to pursue your passion and finish your projects. This has been Sarah Werner, and... I'm going to go finish this episode of Girl in Space. Wish me luck. <laughs>